How do I pass the CPJE exam? The California Pharmacy Jurisprudence exam. Get your tips and advice today. Welcome back to my channel, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm Dr. Jessica Louie, and I help burned out pharmacists and healthcare professionals simplify their lives and reset stress and burnout. Together, we are going to be talking about the CPJE exam and tips and advice for passing this California pharmacist examination. A reminder that I am not affiliated with CPJE, NABP, any of the licensure exams, and this is my personal advice and personal experience with this examination. I'm a licensed pharmacist in California. I passed my CPJE exam on the first try in 2013. As of today in 2021, the CPJE exam is an exam that you must take and pass to practice as a licensed pharmacist in California. Now, if you want some historical data about the CPJE and how it's changed over the years, you can find all the historical pass rates and things in the links below. You can also find resources about passing your board exams and how to go into board exams with the right mindset that you're going to be passing them. Now we're going to be talking about passing this exam. And of course, anytime we're taking a new exam, we're going to look at the regulations and look at what is the time limit, the number of questions on the exam, the format of the exam before we take it. And this can be updated every year. So please make sure you're looking at the current data. As of today, there are three main areas the questions are coming from. We're looking at patient medications, patient outcomes, and patient operation. Patient medications is where you are collecting, organizing information you're gathering from the medical chart, the diagnostic tests, and you are verifying that this is the correct medication through verification of the order, the labels, the compounding. In patient outcomes, you are determining the best course of action based on the pharmacokinetic properties, the guidelines. You are talking to other healthcare professionals and you are promoting public health for the patient and the community. You are looking at medication use systems, pharmaceutical devices, inventory control. You're looking at quality improvement and quality control. And as you can see from these three topics, there is not a majority of the questions coming from a law-based, either federal or state law type of questions and topics. And this is very different from other exams you may be taken in your MPJE and different states you're licensed in. I'm also licensed in Utah. I took my Utah MPJE and it was very much a law type of exam. Whereas on the CPJE, currently it does have a lot of clinical type of questions. So how is the best way to approach taking the CPJE? Best way to approach this is to study for it just like you study for the NAPLEX exam. Yes, you heard me correct. Studying for the CPJE just like you studied for the NAPLEX exam is going to help you tremendously. The current CPJE exam has 90 questions. You have two hours to complete the exam. And the big thing about it is once you answer a question, you move forward in the exam. There is no moving back to change an answer once you've submitted your answer. So that's why forward navigation is something that many schools of pharmacy have implemented so that you are prepared as a student as you enter to take this examination. So besides the tips I already gave in my previous two videos on how to study for the NAPLEX exam and how to approach board exams in general, here are some tips for studying for the CPJE exam. Now, since it is very clinical and it involves those three categories we've already talked about, it's imperative that you know your brand and generic medications. Yes, I highly recommend you knowing at least the top 300 medications, brand and generic. I personally recommend starting with the generic name first and then learning the brand names. And this is because in our medical system, medical students are also emphasized on generic names first. Just as with the NAPLEX exam, you may see questions on dose adjustments. This includes renal and hepatic impairments, so knowing how to adjust the doses of these medications for those dysfunctions. Also knowing all of your pharmacokinetic and calculations that you've already practiced, including IV to PO conversions and sterile compounding conversions. 
You can also think about medication stability and compatibility. You know, how do you why in a medication in the hospital setting? Can an antibiotic such as meropenem be why in with a vasopressor like epinephrine? Can you those be given the same line or not? You may encounter types of patient cases related to this that you will actually see in the hospital setting. Can you compound a medication in D5W or NS or sterile water and how much do you need to compound it in volume-wise? Those are things that you can also encounter on these different types of board exams. It's also important to know what medications have a REMS program and you can find the most up-to-date information on the FDA website. Just as with the NALPLEX, it's really important that you understand very common disease states and current guidelines. These disease states include asthma, COPD, acute coronary syndrome, also known as STEMI or NSTEMIs, anticoagulation, and stroke management. It also includes different types of infectious diseases like pneumonia, either in the hospital or in the community setting. And then common disease states like diabetes, dyslipidemia, hypertension that we see in the community setting all the time. In terms of the law section for CPJE, I highly recommend that you are reading up on the latest information for the federal and the state laws, and then also doing all of the practice questions available to you in terms of through the California law book that you're using or the practice questions that are listed on the appropriate websites. So those were our tips on studying for the CPJE exam. Remember, the number one tip is to study for the CPJE exam, just like you're studying for the NAPLEX exam, and then adding on that state and federal law information to it. Remember to get all of our practice resources linked below and comment below with your favorite resource. Remember, you can watch our prior videos on how to study for the NAPLEX exam and the number one mistake you might be making when studying for board exams. Make sure that you are taking action and you can also watch our videos on burnout, simplifying, and well-being linked here. Until next time, spark joy.